This video will help you to create your app art project. App art includes a kind of optical illusion, and a way we can create that illusion is by adding value. And value is when we go dark to light or light to dark, and this creates the illusion that something is rounded or moving and so on. We want to be successful in creating value and using shading in our project, so we're going to practice on a small sheet first. When you start to create your practice sheet, you're going to create a value scale that's approximately an inch wide and then just goes all the way across your paper. So go near the bottom and just make little tick marks where about an inch would be so you know where to put your ruler. And then when you're using a ruler, it's so important to make sure that your fingers are not really close together. So you're going to kind of spread, space your fingers out about like this and push downward so you cannot move it. If you have your hands really close together, that ruler is going to wobble all over the place and it makes it very frustrating to use a ruler. So this is a really great time to also practice using a ruler because we're going to need to use a ruler to get our nice straight lines. Now we're going to create a miniature version of our project so we can also practice our valuing or shading on this kind of shape as well. So you're just going to take your marker and make a point for all your lines to go to and then make approximately three or four little sections that you can practice in. For the next part, I especially like to use pencil on my final project because you're kind of doing right side up and upside down rainbows and every other one. They do not have to be lined up unless you would like them to be lined up. So you decide how you'd like to do that. Mine are not lined up. I prefer how they are kind of staggered, but it's up to you. It's your project and you decide how you'd like to practice. When you're adding color, you have the option of using colored pencils or using the art sticks. I only have one box per table for these. They're a little uncomfortable to kind of hold on to because they're square, but the benefit is that you don't have to sharpen them like you do colored pencils. But they're a little more tricky to get in smaller spaces because of their shape. So really, it's another preference thing. And if you're using colored pencils, you could use a tray and a sharpener and a stick, or you may use also the crayon sharpeners to sharpen your pencils as well. So decide which will work best for you. Maybe you'd like to try both on your practice because who knows, maybe you want to use both or maybe you decide on one or the other while you're practicing. When you're creating your value scale, I highly recommend using a dark color because you'll really be able to see the change from dark to light and if you choose to label the areas like I did you can so that maybe this will help to remind you so when you're doing your darkest you're basically using as much pressure as you can to get your pigment as dark as possible with your colored pencil or the art stick that you decide to use so go ahead and really use a lot of pressure not to the point where you're breaking your pencil lead but so that you notice it's really bold and for time's sake, I'm not going to shade in the whole entire thing, but I want you to notice the difference. Also, a little pointer, super helpful tip. When you are shading, if you don't rotate your pencil a bunch, then when you get to the areas where it's lighter, you're not going to notice the pencil lines as much. So I'll show you when I get to that point. So we're getting gradually lighter here, so I'm using just a little less pressure. It's kind of a medium pressure, sort of like the medium shade here and I'm not turning my pencil I'm keeping it that same little angle that I got going on here 
if you rotate it and rotate it, you'll notice it kind of changes the sharpness. So it changes what the lines look like or what the pigment looks like when it's going on your paper. And then as you get lighter, you just get lighter and lighter, barely any pressure. And then the white can just stay white. Now we'll practice on our little mini project here. So you're using the same kind of idea as you are on the value scale, except you're doing it in kind of a more condensed space. So you're going from dark to medium to light to white. Okay, but we're just doing it in little itty bitty increments. Also notice the white area lines up on my little shapes here. So it does the same thing on my original or my final project. So you can see the highlights all line up. It's almost making a skinny triangle shape. So that's really important to keep your optical art with its optical illusion and creating that roundness. Also the direction that you shade is very important too because you're going to create illusion by going kind of with the object. That's so, so important. And that's why we're doing our practice first. So let me zoom in. And I'll show you a miniature version. And you and yours get to decide what colors you want to use. Maybe you want to use two colors or three or create a pattern. Start thinking about that while you're practicing. So when we're next to our edge, sometimes it's a little easier to go up and down when you're right next to the edge. But then you're going to almost immediately turn your paper and kind of go with the object, like I was saying. So I'm using a lot of pressure right now like I did in my first box. Now I'm gonna lightly or gradually lift my pencil so I'm not pushing as hard. This is something that we have to kind of feel for ourselves. It's something that you can't really see, you have to feel for yourself. So I'm gradually, gradually using less and less pressure and I'm not rotating my pencil. I'm keeping it at that same angle. Takes a little bit of getting used to. And then I'm going to turn my paper so it's a little easier for me to get across the shape on this side. So like I said, sometimes we have to go kind of straight on the edge to get it right up next to our edge. And then I'm going to start going with the object. Little teeny tiny movements using a lot of pressure. And now I'm gradually getting less and less pressure. And then when I switch colors, I really want to pay attention to where this highlight is and do the same thing on this one here. Make sure you finish your practice to the fullest and get really comfortable with these methods before you start your final. When you're done with your practice, grab a small sheet and write your name and teacher code on the back. And then you're going to take your marker and make a point approximately in the middle. And then we'll start adding some lines from that point outward. Make sure that you have an even number of sections. So if you feel more comfortable, you can use pencil first for this. I'm going to just go straight with marker. Remember, we don't get lots and lots of sheets of paper. So if you're not feeling super comfortable, definitely use a pencil first. When you have an even number of sections, then we're going to add that kind of rainbow shape. And I would certainly start with a pencil because even I kind of get tripped up on making sure my line goes the right direction. So I would definitely say start with pencil here. So this one I'm going to do rainbows that go upward. And I'm going to stagger them again. This one that's going to go down and really have them dip. Kind of creates that really nice illusion when you add the value of it being curved. And you decide how many you'd like to break these up into, but you're kind of keeping going with this. So this one's gonna go up and it's gonna go off the edge here. 
and then same thing here. So just kind of keep going, add all your rainbow shapes all the way around, and as long as you have the correct number, even number, then your pattern should be good. If it's goofy, then you can always add another marker line, which is another great reason to use a pencil for this portion. And after all your lines are added, trace them with Sharpie very, very carefully. When your lines are all traced and ready to go, you're ready for some color, and you're going to add your color just like we practiced. So from starting very dark and gradually getting lighter to white, remember to have your highlight be in the same area on every little section right here. So your highlight's right smack dab in the middle. And then remember you can go kind of up and down when you're shading in here, but then we're gonna switch to go with this rainbow shape to create that illusion of it being kind of round.